I just want to, I'm blown away that uh, your that Toyota, this organization, would allow this to take place. It's, I'm not going to say it's unheard of, but it's truly a, a blessing. And it's a blessing to be able to see my, I, I don't know any one of you, I may know somebody, it's such a big company, I haven't seen anybody I know yet, but we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, amen? amen. Um, I want to take a moment just to pray. Father, I, I thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity and the venue that you've uh, provided us to not only break bread, but to eat of the living bread today, Lord. Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm praying for revelation today. As, uh, we, as you speak through me, I pray that the words that I say wouldn't be Mike Gonzalez inspired, but inspired by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, Mike Gonzalez, born and raised here in San Antonio, Texas. I uh, was raised in the church from the time I was eight years old. And came to know the Lord at eight, but I was raised in that atmosphere where I felt I had to receive my salvation every Sunday, okay? Um, because I was afraid of God. Um, I always felt that there was something I had to do for him. So at the time that I was eight, I'll never forget pastor um, giving the altar call, and I would, I would raise my hand, and I was getting baptized like twice a week, and, and we had a problem. Well, the real big one got, uh, scared me. Uh, two years after I gave my life to the Lord at eight, 10 years old, my, my parents get divorced. And as kid, I'm, I'm sure some of you can relate with that. At eight years old, uh, I was, you know, from the time that I was born to eight, I became very dependent, obviously like a child should, on my folks. And so at 10, when, when the divorce happened, it really did a number on my mind, it did a number on my soul, and not really understanding what was going on back then, um, God really started to show me that there was just something that just started happening to me from my soul. You know, the Bible talks about we're a three-part creation. What parts are those? We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. Well, in the spiritual realm, I mean, there's, that's where we have our identity with Christ, amen? That's where, that's where he identifies us. We're, we're, the Bible says we're, we're cre uh, spiritual creations. But in my soul, that's where we have our mind, our will, and emotions. And because of the turmoil I was going through, you can see the expression of my body was fear, inadequacy, insecurity, and the list was pretty endless. So as I grew up, I started doing things to really try to cover how I felt. Currently, some of those things are, and I haven't arrived. I mean, I don't think any one of us as, as Christians are 100% arrived. Would you agree with that? I mean, the only one that really, really, truly lived a successful Christian life was who? Jesus Christ. The last time I read, he's in me. He's in every single one of you. And it's pretty cool because when I look at you, what's your name? Erica. Erica. Erica is the Erica expression of Christ. I'm the Mike Gonzalez expression of Christ. And he made us each individually different, but for one purpose, relationship with him. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about the theme of, I was like, what do we call this thing? And Jerry's like, Mike, we need kind of a theme. Well, I said identity theft. Because I, what do, you, what do you think about when you think about identity theft? You're thinking of your credit cards. You're like, where's my wallet? I pulled some stuff up on the internet, and I, I was just reading the definition. Identity theft, fraud, and the, the definition was when someone pretends to be someone else other than who they are. And then they start talking about victimization, victims, people, us, that suffer these identity theft situations. A victim of identity theft can suffer adverse consequences and if they're particularly held accountable for the actions or the line beliefs or anything that's instilled on them. And you know, that really did a number on my mind, so I did some further research and I said, what does identity protection look like? And I'm sure some of you guys have some of those services on your credit cards, and some of your you know, credit card services offer them, or they try to solicit you on these things. And there was five points of protection. And this, this was pretty cool. And it just showed me that God's in everything. And this is, this is just a regular marketing piece, and it says five points of protection. Well, there's monitoring, scanning, restoring, guaranteeing, and tracking. And, and the, the, the middle three really got me. It said scanning. Well, scanning for threats of your identity. The third one said restoring. 
restoring your identity and your good name. The third one in the middle said guaranteeing. Guaranteeing our identity through theft protection services. Let me tell you what God really revealed to me. So here I am, I'm 10 years old, uh, divorced. I'm like, Mom, Dad, can you imagine? And then I was that guy that went to church on Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, Fridays, and then Saturday we used to go out and just do whatever it was for community service. I don't know if anybody in here can relate with that. My dad was involved in every single ministry, and the only reason I like Fridays is because Friday was like sweet bread night, and it was probably the funnest thing that we ever did. Well, that night I got locked in the church at 10 years old. I Man, I was like home alone. I could have made that movie. Home alone, I got locked in the church. I wake up, all I see is a red exit light, and I'll never forget, and I was going to, I won't say the name of the church, okay? But I went to this church that was really close to here, and it's on the south side of town. And think about it, 10 years old, locked in the church, my family's not there. What's the first thing you think I'm thinking? The rapture happened. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, God left me. So I'm like, mom, dad, mom, and I run outside, and what happens when you push this door open right here? And you, you're outside. It's locked. Now I'm locked outside. It's about 2 30, 3 in the morning. Well, there's this one lady in our church, and her name was Sally. We called her Sally Blue. She wore blue everything. And she owned a manufacturing company that made these plastic moldings, and everything was blue. If she's here, and I'm sure you guys have somebody like this in your life, if she's here, I know God hasn't come back yet. So I ran to her house, and in my panic, I think I passed her house. And when I passed the house, I went up to a similar house because they kind of looked the same. And this one was beat up and not like her house. And I was like, how long was I asleep? So I'm thinking as a kid, oh, I must have been asleep for a long time. The rapture happened. And now I'm going to have to get my head chopped off for, you know, the Thief in the Night movies. And oh, my gosh. Guys, I was afraid. And I laugh about it now. But think about it as a kid. Think about the turmoil that you're going through today, whatever that looks like. So at that point in time, God revealed to me, Michael, um, you're safe with me, but I didn't believe him. So I made a deal with God. I said, God, I will do anything for you. Please, 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 please come back for me. On my way back, walking back, I turned to my right and there's a house that's blue. Now, I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying this is what happened, okay? At 10 years old, so what happened was I had from the time I was 10 years old all the way up to 31, the dash in my life was very performance-based Christianity. And it was, it was a lie. There was a major identity factor for me. There was an identity theft. And I want to talk about the major identity in the Bible. If you have your Bible, go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. I wish I would have known this back then. The scripture says, and the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now the death he was talking about was a spiritual death, correct? The death that I was experiencing as, as a young man was not a spiritual death because I had my relationship with the Lord. But the death I was dealing with because of this identity issue, not being able to identify with myself in Christ, I have this solical fear. Now, is there fear in Christ? Absolutely not. There's no fear in Christ. And I want to show you the diagram. Jerry gave me this white erase board. And this is our spirit, and we're a three-part creation. And here's our soul. And this is our body. This is the point of identity for us. And in the spirit, what does God say he is? I am love, I am joy, I am goodness, I am gentleness, kindness, self-control, all the fruit of the spirit. That's something that we cannot produce. However, the Christian life obviously is lived from the inside out. I wasn't doing that. See, because I, I, I had a major identity issue. I had no idea that God was my source. I was living this Christian life from my soul. It was Mike Gonzalez with God's help, with what he knew about God, trying to implement security, trying to cover up all my inadequacies with performance. Can you relate? Does that make sense? And I'm not trying to convince or persuade anybody here. This is just more of a testimony. 
Um, I'm a big believer that every single one of you have a testimony, and people can argue with what you teach all day long, they just, but they can't argue with you on what you've experienced with the Lord individually. Um, the next scripture says, let's go to, let's go to the deception. So think about the 10-year-old kid. What's the deception in his mind right now? So think of me, 10-year-old kid. Do you think God really left me? Think of a circumstance that you're going through today. For some of us, it's financial. For some of us, it's marital. For some of us, it's health challenges. Um, for some of us, it's work-related. Um, I don't know what it looks like, but I know for me at that point in time, my identity at that time was how I felt. Because how I feel, guys, dictates my reality sometimes. The reality for me at the time of that, being a kid at, at divorce was abandonment. I got abandoned by my parents. And then I get abandoned by God. And then fast forward a few years later, I meet my beautiful bride, we get married, we have children. Um, you know, my sister, I had a sister who was eight years younger than me and she's murdered. And there was another sense of abandonment. I felt where God had just let me down. I had this major identity issue. So I start identifying with how I feel. Now I'm angry. Part of me even felt angry toward God. And the whole time I'm asking, like, Lord, where are you in all this? Well, let me share a little bit about what he did for me. What he, he, he revealed to me in 2 Corinthians 5.17 if you go to that scripture, if you have your Bible, I'm going to use my name and use your name. Michael, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you, he is a new creation. Old things have been passed away and all these things have been made new. Then why do I feel the way I feel, God? Why do I still feel angry? Why do I still feel hurt? Why do I still feel abandoned? So that's about all the way up to about age 21. And then at 22, something happened. I started getting into this success thing. And I got involved in every little bit of thing that you can figure out from network marketing to anything to really cope with how I feel. You know, the funny thing is, is God never intended for us to cope with anything. Because coping is you dealing with it in your own effort when the last three words on the cross were, it is finished. See, God never intended for us to live a Christian life that only He can live in and through us for us. The Bible says you're the branch, the Mike Gonzalez expression, use your name. He's divine. What I found myself being was divine. So therefore, not only did I have an identity issue, I had a source issue. If these conduits on the wall right here are outlets of power, where's the power source? For us, it's CPS, right? We get that bill every month. See, but the conduit cannot produce anything independent of the CPS source, right? Who's our source, guys? Who's the conduit? You know that my, I told my wife one day, I said, baby, thank you for, and my wife knows my whole story, obviously she's my wife. I've been married 22 years to this beautiful bride. And, and one day we're having coffee and, and, she, and I tell her, baby, you know that I cannot unconditionally love you? And she's like, She's like, I know. Because we started, God started giving us revelation in our marriage. And she says, but God can. Just think about it. I have conditions. The humanity part of us, the old creation. Remember, we're not the old creation. All things have been put away and you have been made new. The old man, the Adamic man, Adam, has expectations. It's all, it's a, it's a what's the word I'm looking for? It is a... Um, codependency, in other words. Codependency says, I will do this for you if you do this for me. That's not God, guys. <laughs> so my wife and I are talking about that. She goes, well, if you can't unconditionally love me, what does that mean? I think I need to allow God to love me because of my testimony, being abandoned, I, I didn't feel lovable. Being rejected, I didn't feel lovable. Therefore, how do you give something that you don't have? You know, part of me right now as I'm talking to you guys is, and this is, the, this is one of the fallennesses of the human nature, is, is saying, Michael, do they get it? You know, it's not my job or your job to be the revealer of what we testify to. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen? 
And the cool thing about that is my wife and I kind of finally came to the point to where we said, look, baby, we have made all of our problems, no matter what your past is, no matter what your testimony is, we make all our problems horizontal. So for example, if you're a worker here at Toyota, if you're a worker, sometimes it's easy to make the employer the problem. And we make all our problems horizontal. Or if you're married and you're in a relationship, it's easy to make who you team up with the problem. Our problems are always vertical. Because I, I constantly, I, I'm reminded that God's constantly saying, Michael, when am I going to be enough? He will allow conflict in our lives to bring us closer to him. Um, I want to chat about something here. If you go back to the identity, if you were to ta ask yourself this question, if, if what you were believing was a lie, how would it impact your life? I mean, what is the absolute truth of, of our identity in Christ? What do you think? How does God look at us? When he sees you, what do you think he sees? He sees the righteousness of his son Christ in you. However, he also sees you as a new creation. Amen? So we have this new identity. How you feel or what you believe about yourself is going to be true. So if I feel inadequate today... How am I going to perform in this side of heaven as an inadequate person? What does the truth of God say? In Christ, I'm more than a conqueror. Amen? Uh, you'll not live beyond what you believe, and if what you believe is a lie, then that's exactly how you're going to live. And here's, here's my prayer for us today, even for myself as I'm up here. Um, if you do not know your true identity, the tendency will be to put on masks to cover up your false self. So I like training. I'm a CrossFit trainer. I identify with it a lot. Um, I serve uh, as the CEO of a company uh, here in town. It's a, we're a national property tax firm. And when I started the company 10 years ago, I drew a lot of identity from that. And um, I serve as an elder at uh, 210 Church. Um, what God has taught me, he says, Michael, that's what you do. It's not who you are. That is you. As a CEO, yeah, as you as a, what are some of the roles that you have here? What do you do, sir? Uh, manufacturing people development. Manufacturer people development? Yep. What do you do, sir? Quality inspection frame. Inspection? What about you, ma'am? Quality assurance inspection. So you are the Toyota expression of that role in the workplace. All of you guys have a purpose. I have a purpose. And I believe that the mission field, there's a lot of people looking for for something, guys. And, it, it, and you know really what it is, and I'm okay saying it? I'll put my machismo away a little bit, but it's love. I mean, God loves us. No matter what our past is, in Christ we have a new past. In Christ we have a new future. What if I told you that you're forgiven? I mean, that was one thing that really, really hit home with me. I had a hard time forgiving myself. I could have let myself off the hook. Deep stuff. I'm asking the Lord, where are we going, Father? Where are we going with this? How many of you people ever felt unworthy? Rejected? How about a failure, anxious, weak, defeated, fearful? Can I tell you something right now? I did not want to do this. I was like, Lord, no, I'm scared. But the Lord really pressed them up on my heart because it wasn't about you, it was about me. This had more to do with me today, being here today, to be able to stand here in Christ, not in my CEO ability of running a business. See, the one thing I'll tell you is, I've tried this, you can't take what you know in your humanity, even though the Word of God says we're in Ephesians 2.10 workmanship, and come here and try to implement and use the Bible as a self-help book. But I, I have felt every one of these things. I, I'm dealing with them right now. And the one thing that I can tell you is God says this. He says, you're secure. In, we're secure in Christ. We're confident in Christ. Anything that's negative, guys, if you go into the hiddenness of Christ, whenever your soul is telling you, this job doesn't treat you well, or whatever the lie is, do you think 
businesses give employees a job because they want to get rid of them? Think about it. Absolutely not. Do you think God adopted us into his family because he doesn't like us? And we're going through all these things because he's just trying to teach us a lesson? Absolutely not. Before you understand your identity in Christ, you really have to understand, and this is what I love about 210 Church, because this is what Pastor John teaches, is you have to understand what it is to be in Adam before you know what it is to be in Christ. We always want a Band-Aid because we live in a microwave society where everything's fast food, everything's instant. But I want to tell you something. Before you know what the problem is, you've got to go to the source of the issue. How many of you guys have dealt with illnesses and, and, and we're treating symptoms? But we're not treating the source. The same thing happened in the garden, guys. It was a major identity theft. The enemy says, I will, he goes, you can eat of the tree, Eve. For the day that you eat of it, what does she say? You will be like God. Remember that scripture? If you don't know that scripture, that's in Genesis chapter, I think it's chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. God, so much to cover in 23 minutes. Ultimately, what I want to tell you is this. My prayer is that we would get to know God is our source. That he would reveal to us that we have a true identity in him. And number three, that he would transform us constantly by the power of his Holy Spirit to get secure in our identity in Christ. And number four, is that we would learn by the power of his Holy Spirit to live from the overflow. Guys, we're the branches. We're the expression of Christ. You, he, you are not the source. And my question is, if you're your own source, are you tired yet? And if you are tired, I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of rest in the hiddenness of Christ. Amen? Hey, I really want to thank you guys. Uh, this is actually, uh, I'll be honest with you, the first time I've ever done something like this. Uh, and I'm honored to do it here with you guys. So thank you very much. Appreciate you, and I can honestly say that I love every single one of you. Amen? Thank you, guys.